Hi, Ashley here with hearthookhome.com and today we are learning how to crochet the houndstooth stitch. This stitch is very simple, it's very easy to do. It's effectively the lemon peel stitch with different colors of yarn. So if you can make the single crochet and the double crochet, you can make the houndstooth stitch. There are a few different things that make this stitch either easier or um, faster to work up. So let's go ahead and learn how to crochet the houndstooth stitch today. This is actually a houndstooth vest pattern that I'm working up that will be available on Heart Hook Home very soon and I am in love with this design. So like I said, the houndstooth is essentially the lemon peel stitch just with different colors of yarn. So you're going to want to have two contrasting colors. Here I have this lovely green and a nice yellow. I wanted to use something that would be um, very nice to eat and easy to see on video. So just like with the lemon peel stitch, when we start this houndstooth tooth pattern, we want to start with a multiple of two plus one. So any multiple of two, so I've got 10, plus one is 11 chains here to start. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the second chain from our hook, and I'm gonna go into the back bar like I usually do, and I'm gonna place a single crochet right there. Now I'm going to double crochet in the next, single crochet in the next all the way to the end. We're going to do single, double, single, and double all the way to the end of the row. And since we're starting with a single crochet and we have an even number of stitches, you should end with a double crochet. So there is my double crochet. I'm not going to complete this yet because part of the beauty of the houndstooth stitch is that we change colors every row. So instead of completing this with the green yarn as I normally would, I'm going to complete this stitch using the other yarn choice that I have chosen. So I'm going to complete this last double crochet with the new color, this yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a small little knot here so that it does not come undone. And now we are ready to go back the opposite direction. So now all we're going to do is chain one and turn. We're going to place a single crochet in the first and a double crochet in the next. So one thing to note, just like with the lemon peel stitch, single in the next, double in the next and we're just going to alternate that single double single double single double one thing to note just like with the lemon peel stitch when we are going back through if you have a single crochet like this next stitch is a little single crochet and then this one's a double crochet and then this one's a single you're always going to place your double crochets in the single from the previous row and if you have a double crochet you're going to place a single in that one so whatever that is from the previous row you're going to do the opposite in that next stitch. And just like last row, you're going to start with a single crochet and end with a double crochet right here. Oh, and see, now that we've gotten to the end of this row, we're going to pull up yarn using the new yarn color. One thing that I hate about this is that you are changing colors every single row, so that means that you've got a lot of yarn ends to weave in. One thing that you can do, if it depends on how bulky you want your fabric to be. So I've gone ahead and picked up this green and I figured when I'm done with this project, if I were to continue on, I could just clip in the middle here and weave in my ends and be, be good. That would be the um, I don't know, it's very tedious and it would look probably the best, but depending on what you're making and how you're feeling about it, you could instead chain one and turn and one way to avoid having all of those ends to weave in is to take the color that you're not using and lay it across your work like this. And then with your green yarn, crochet around this yellow so that when you get back to the end, your yellow tail is at the end as well. Let's go ahead and work one of these up together. Get my yarn pulled here. 
So I've got my green and I'm ready for my next green. So we're changing colors every single row. I've chained one, I'm gonna do a single crochet in my first, but I'm going to go make sure that I'm encompassing this yellow yarn when I go to make this. So a single crochet, and then a double crochet, and then a single crochet, and then a double crochet. And we're just going all the way to the end of the row. And we're gonna end with a double, and I've still got this yellow yarn in the middle here so that when I get to the end, I can drop the green and pick up this yellow and continue on. Now one thing, you will want to make sure, possibly, before you complete that last one, you might need to pull your yellow yarn just a little bit because it is possible that you could have like a, a loop coming out the back if it's not pulled nice and, and tight, right? So go ahead and pull up with that yellow, make sure your green is not super huge. We're gonna chain one and turn. Now we're going to encompass the green yarn with our yellow stitches so that when we get back to the end over here, our green is ready to be picked up and moved across. We'll do one more row together and see the effect that this creates. This is such a fun stitch and it really is very easy to crochet. And I think it looks best with two contrasting colors like this black and white over here really makes those stitches pop. And you know, when I first started practicing this stitch, I thought, man, it just kind of looks sloppy. But what I've noticed is the bigger your piece, the more uniform it looks. Like I think that this looks gorgeous, how it is all just like this, this black and white. And the smaller swatches just sometimes look a little sloppier to me. So the bigger the piece, the better the effect single crochet and a double crochet in the last going around that green yarn now before I do my last yarn over I'm gonna make sure see how this green here these little loops are coming up we're gonna pull that green yarn that we crocheted around right we're gonna pull it just a little bit like that now that being said, you don't wanna pull it so tight that it goes like this and starts puckering. You don't wanna do that. So make sure it's nice and flat just to the end there, just like that. And that is all there is to the houndstooth stitch. Now, there is one more tip that I wanted to share with you before we leave this lovely tutorial today. As I am working on this vest, this vest is worked in the round, joined and turned every round, right? So I'm changing colors every row still, but because this is worked in the round, I do not have to carry my yarn all the way back. So I've started and completed most of this row, and I wanted to show you how I join this yarn to make sure that this black here is ready for the next row for me to pull right on up. So I've got my singles, and my doubles, just like with the hound's tooth pattern. And I've also noticed that because I'm not carrying that black all the way across, the fabric isn't as dense as it is if you had that extra uh, piece of yarn in there. So that is something to consider as well. If you do decide to, if you've got a flat piece that you're working back and forth and you decide to carry that yarn and crochet around it as you go, um, you might need to go up a hook size because that extra yarn in there might make it just enough stiffer that you need it to um, go up a hook size to keep that nice feel of the fabric. So I finished with my double crochet. I'm ready to join to this first single crochet here. So what I'm going to do is insert that hook, right? I'm gonna drop my white, and I'm just gonna complete that slip stitch with the black. Perfect, and I'm gonna pull this white so that it's not super loosey-goosey. I'm gonna chain one and turn. And now, in order to make sure that when I get back around that my white yarn is ready to be picked up, because right now, my white yarn is coming from the front of my piece right here. All I'm going to do is pull, make sure that this white yarn is nice and tight. I'm gonna pull it to the back, and I'm going to complete the first single crochet of the hound's tooth in this stitch right here with that white yarn to the back. So now I can continue 
all the way around this entire row, round, and when I get back over here, I will join to the top of this first single crochet using the white yarn that's in the back. And honestly, this seam, this is my seam going up the entire way. And it's, I mean, it is a little bit noticeable. You can see that the black is just a little bit bigger, but honestly, doesn't that look pretty seamless for carrying it up every row? I think that that's a beautiful way to work the houndstooth stitch in the round. So you, this would be an excellent way to work up beanies that are in the round like this, or a coffee cup cozy, or anything that is a circle pattern, an infinity scarf, etc. So I hope that you loved the hound's tooth stitch. I hope that you will work up this vest with me when it is published. Watch the Heart Hook Home website and YouTube channel for more crochet, crochet tutorials in the future. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.